The Belgian Center for Human Rights is uh, uh, the NGO that was established in 1995 in Belgrade. And the main uh, reason why we established the Belgrade Center was mm, some uh, idea to develop the education in the field of human rights because uh, before that we didn't have uh, any, um, at least not on the university level, on the law school, we didn't have human rights as a subject. And then we find out that most of our judges, prosecutors, the professionals in the law profession, that they have no idea about the human rights standards. And that was the main reason why we established the Belgrade Center. But at that time, having in mind that it was the time of the war, the end of the war, we, most of us, uh, we uh, became the activists in the NGO, the civil society community in the, in the beginning of 90s because the war started and most of us, we were anti-war activists. We were very unsuccessful in this anti-war um, uh, activism because war started and uh, many very bad things happened. So in 1995, the end of the war, at least the Bosnian war and war with Croatia, we decided that maybe, you know, it will be very important and very useful for the society to develop this education in the field of human rights. In the meantime, we had a, uh, the regime that was on power in Serbia, uh, which was not supportive towards the human rights in general, so we decided to uh, make some kind of uh, uh, monitoring the situation in the country regarding the human rights and to find out is it uh, the law that are bringing in the parliament, is this really in accordance with the human rights standards on the universal and European level. And so we are now producing a human rights report for our country. From 1998, we started to do that. We have a human rights school uh, for young students and NGO activists. And uh, this year, we finished the 17th human rights school already. So every year, we are um, uh, educating more than 20, sometimes 25, some, sometimes 30 students for two-week course on human rights. And most of them are now very, very engaged in the human rights activism all over Serbia, not only in the capital of Serbia, Belgrade, but all over. So that's the main, you know, project that we are dealing with. But then we have projects of a different kind, you know, now, for example, right now the project that our ongoing project is uh, uh, monitoring the situation in the prison regarding the torture and the inhuman and degrading treatment and I hope that the Burger Center will be the part of this national preventive mechanism according to the uh, Convention Against Torture uh, because we are cooperating quite good and very often with ombudsperson, because we have an ombudsperson in, in, in Serbia. Uh, we have some research projects, you know, we had a project about self-determination and the right to self-determination, which is very, um, uh, how to say, tricky issue in Serbia right now because of the independence of Kosovo and all these political problems that we have. So. Uh, I could, I don't know, mention many, many other projects. I um, was invited uh, to be here with you in Padova uh, by uh, uh, Professor Paolo Di Stefani and uh, uh, the main uh, subject that uh, uh, my lecture was, uh, was the subject of, of uh, the consequences of the war in the former Yugoslavia. I uh, explain very shortly uh, what are the main reasons why the Yugoslavia fall apart. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm right. Maybe there are some many other reasons, but I pointed out 
few reasons that I believe are important. Even I know that there are, it is really the complex issue and it has to be um, developed uh, much more, but it was a short presentation. And then, you know, we discuss with the students here, is it possible to solve the, these consequences uh, or to make them uh, less painful if we use the history and uh, uh, the memory of the history on the proper way. And there is the other question, is the transitional justice maybe the way how we could, uh, and it is, it is really right that through the transitional justice you could punish and prosecute the people that are committed some crimes. But then on the other hand, there are some scholars and some people in general that believe that transitional justice is not needed, that we have to focus on the future and not to talk about the past and to face the past because it's too early to do that. And so it's a dilemma that we could always discuss, you know, especially with the young people because the young people uh, usually are not or were not involved in the conflicts and now when they grow up they have the problem for example the youngsters in Serbia they have the problem that they have a very bad image in the world like Serbia and Serbs and then they have these bad feelings and they are always complaining about that because they don't feel like that they are personally guilty because they were babies at the time when the war started and now they are 20 year old and they have to face some uh, current history that they were not involved and that's you know the, the issue that I'm discussing very often with the youngsters in Serbia so it was interesting with Italian students to discuss the same thing and I believe that um, some kind of exchange of the young people uh, all over the world in general, but now when I'm here in Padova in the center, maybe between these two organizations it could be of help for both sides, you know. Some Italian students to learn what happened and what are the, the consequences in the current situation in, in Serbia and for the students in Serbia to meet people, you know, youngsters from Italy and to exchange. Uh, some experience and to see how they are perceiving our uh, current history.